I set up a DIY weather station in my garden that's connected to Home Assistant and logs everything from wind speed and direction to rainfall and temperature. Why, you might ask? Well, partly because I'm a nerd who loves data collection, and partly because I kind of want a vertical wind turbine, but I want to see if it's actually worth installing it in my garden before I drop a hefty chunk of change on one. So here's how you can do this too, although if I'm being perfectly transparent, I can't actually recommend the kit that I'm using, and you'll see why. But this is the kit that I bought. It's from the good ship Pimeroni, and it's their Enviro weather kit. Now, to be clear, you can just buy the weather station sensors yourself, the, the wind speed and direction and the rain level sensors, along with their mounting arms and a pole, all for around the same price as most standalone weather stations that don't connect to anything, they just give you a little wireless display. Of course, those sensors won't actually do anything on their own. You'll have to hook something up to them. I would guess an ESP32 running ESP Home would be the easiest, but that's up to you. Naturally, if you'd rather not build a data capture device yourself, their Enviro weather board seems like the perfect fit. Not only does it let you use all three of those sensors, but it comes with a BME 280 pressure, temperature and humidity sensor, and an LTR 559 light sensor too. That is all connected to the world via a backpacked Raspberry Pi Pico W, and it's powered by a little dual AAA battery holder. Now, Pimeroni claims that with the right settings, this can get six months of battery life with two AA batteries, so that should be pretty healthy. Now, since this is also somewhat a review of this kit itself, let me explain a little bit about how all of this stuff actually works. First off, on the hardware side, it looks like the wind speed sensor is basically just a, a rotary encoder or a switch, which effectively sends a pulse after it completes one rotation. If you know the size of the cups and how many pulses you get in a second, well, you can work out how fast the cups are moving and therefore work out how fast the wind speed is. The wind direction version or the wind direction sensor I think is pretty similar but with a number more positions, I think 16 in total that it can report. The rain sensor is actually pretty clever. It's basically a seesaw mechanism where, at least according to their open source firmware, it takes 0.2794 millimeters of rain to get the seesaw to tip from one side to the other. It then counts how many ticks it sees over a given time period and then can add that up to give you the total amount of rainfall. To set up the kids, you'll obviously want to mount the hardware sensors to their mounts and then the whole thing to something outside as securely as you can. The RJ11 cable from the wind speed sensor actually plugs into the wind direction sensor's pass-through ports and then both the RJ11 cables from the direction sensor and the rain sensors will then need to plug into the board. Now, the full kit does uh, include an enclosure for the uh, Pi Pico or the Enviro board and the battery pack, although they say you will need to drill a hole in the bottom of it to be able to fit the cables in. Plugging in the battery pack to the board along with the rain and wind sensor cables and then switch the battery pack on, you'll be greeted with a rapidly blinking white LED or activity LED or sort of uh, warning LED. Uh, that is your signal to fire up your phone and connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot that it's created to provision it. The setup menu looks great, if kind of buggy, and basically asks you to give it a name, connect to a Wi-Fi network, and then tell it where you want to send its data to. You can have it store the data locally and you come and manually retrieve the readings, or you can have it pulse the data to a WebSocket, to an Influx database, MQTT, or Adafruit I.O. I'm already using MQTT for my solar charge controller bridge, and it's generally the best way to send data to Home Assistant, so that's what I'm using here. One of the most important settings for battery life is how often it takes readings and how often it publishes those results to your chosen output method. The default settings are new readings every 15 minutes and upload them after five readings are taken. 
Now, they actually recommend every 10 readings, so I'm not sure why 5 is the default, but still, basically this kind of queuing results helps save the battery life, as connecting to the network is a fairly power-hungry task, so doing so one, you know, one burst every 2.5 hours, uh, every 15 minutes and 10 readings, makes sense. Unfortunately, on the firmware version that ships with these boards, that feature seems to be broken, at least for MQTT. It will only ever transmit the most recent result, despite taking two and a half hours between those transmissions. What's even more frustrating, although this isn't Pimeroni's fault, is that Home Assistant seems to use the time of arrival to know when new data is from, rather than, say, a timestamp built into the message or result. That means that even if the feature did work, all of those 10 results would show up as one time slot because they're all received at the same time, rather than backfill that data, making the data kind of functionally useless. Now, the former can be fixed by updating the firmware, and technically the latter can be fixed by just uploading one result at a time, but that degrades the battery life considerably. You will want to get comfortable upgrading the firmware on these boards though, as the alpha tag that they list is very much accurate. This is painfully buggy, and the documentation is both dense and sparse. I'm someone who is clearly very comfortable with tech, programming, microcontrollers, and electronics. I designed and hand manufactured the open source response time tool, so I clearly have some idea of what I'm doing when it comes to hobbyist electronics like these. Still, I don't have any experience with the RP2040 chip that the EnviroBoard is based on, and that meant that I had no idea how to back up my config.py file or check the logs.txt as their documentation recommends. Plugging the board into your PC in its standard device mode, much like any microcontroller, only shows up as a serial port, not a USB device and a file system. I followed their instructions for upgrading the firmware, which is to hold the boot select button that's on the Pico down while you press the reset port, and then the, the board will show up as a removable USB stick. Except no file system shows up, only a space to drop the .uf2 firmware file. It took a lot of forum posts and YouTube video watching to find out that I needed a third-party tool called Thony, and then to click this definitely not a button at the bottom right of the screen to select the Pico's COM port, and then it finally showed up. Although, make sure that it's not in the bootloader mode when you try and connect, i.e. it's not connected as a USB stick, put it in the normal mode by pressing the boot select button and reset again. But the thing is, none of that was included in their documentation, so anyone who isn't already proficient with the RP2040 and developing for it would have no idea where to even begin. Something else that isn't supported is Home Assistant, at least natively. Using MQTT, Home Assistant needs the device to basically register itself with the MQTT broker. In Home Assistant, that is normally the Mosquito add-on. That lets Home Assistant know to create entities and listen out for new updates from the board. These Enviro boards don't support that. It's something I think I know how to do, and actually, as of actually filming this, I think I've already implemented it, so keep an eye out for a pull request there, but until I or someone else does add that in, it's not supported. You'll need to edit your configuration.yaml file using the file editor add-on to add each of the values that it reports as its own entity. I'll leave a link in the description to my post on Pimeroni's GitHub repo, which contains all of the code you'll need to set up, at least the weather board in Home Assistant. Now, remember how I said that this was a buggy mess? Well, yeah. After realizing that Home Assistant wouldn't accept multi-packet bursts properly, I set it to take a new reading every 30 minutes and upload after every reading. That is five times faster than the recommended settings, but I mean, I can deal with it burning through batteries once a month or so, especially if I use some rechargeables. Sadly, after just 12 hours of somewhat useless readings, because it's every 30 minutes, the data just stopped. No new packets were being sent, 
which is just wonderful. I brought it inside, worked out how to connect to it, found that it was storing all of the data still, but the logs just showed that it flat out stopped. That's when I upgraded the firmware, set it back up again, and then stuck it back outside. I woke up the next day to find out that it was dead. Like, no new data at all. Again. Wonderful. Turns out that the batteries were dead. <laughs> yeah, two whole days of battery life is what I got out of that. It was right around that time that, uh, well, I gave up and hardwired it. I already have a solar battery bank in the shed. I have a waterproof enclosure that's providing power to my, frankly, terrible rowing machine. And the wind station is literally strapped to the frame for my solar panels. So I just ran a 5 meter USB cable and set the board to pump out new results every 5 minutes and it's been so much more useful. The wind is often somewhat inconsistent, so before I was basically getting a lot of flat lines at 0 meters per second, but now I'm seeing much more of the, the peaks and troughs, it's much more granular and I have no problems with it needing new batteries. Beautiful. To be clear, it still crashed a few times, although I did bodge some hacks on the firmware, which seems to make it reliable, but, uh, well, who knows at this point. So, it should be pretty clear why I can't recommend this kit right now. I think in a few months, when some of the bugs have been worked out, I can see this being a great choice for the data curious, but still having the data on how windy it is out there is going to be very useful for me assessing whether a wind turbine is a worthwhile investment for me. And of course, that will be a at least one, if not multiple videos on the channel. So do make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I will leave a link to both Pironi's GitHub and the full kit in the description if you're interested. None of those are affiliate links, by the way. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of it. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you have any thoughts in general, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If you want any more information, like I said, leave that in the comments, check out the GitHub page, and uh, hopefully I will have uh, an update for the, uh, the board to support Home Assistant. Fingers crossed, I'm gonna be testing that later, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, if you want to support me and my idiocy, then you can check out the uh, YouTube uh, you know, join button, become a member, become a patron, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use, but do help me out when you use them, and they're linked in the description. There's also plenty of other videos on the end cards, including the rest of the Smart Home series, with more regular Smart Home stuff, and also the Solar series, if you want to check that one out too. Otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you in the next video.